Hello everyone, I'm your hardcore host, Rickhead, and this is a special edition of HWR's In The Moment. And right now, we of course, we have the hardcore crew here. First is the incomparable Lance Moss. Lance, what's up? Not much, feeling better than I was uh, last Friday, but still got a little ways to go, but let's have some fun. Absolutely, and she is known as the Vicious Vixen, Zoe Nightshade. Zoe, how you doing tonight? Doing great. Had a great show last night, and I'm sitting here eating Chinese, talking to you great people. All right, and last and certainly not least, uh, he is still Contents. Uh, he is the son of a bitch, and uh, God, Andy, don't mind me, guys. I've uh, had one too many. <laughs> Andy, how nope, are you doing tonight? No, I'm doing not too bad. Thank you for. Um... Listening to the HWR show, you've been faithful fans. All I'd like to say is get some of your other friends as well to listen because the more the people that listen, the more entertaining we can be for you guys. Yeah, and when we go live on Florida Corner Rants with uh, Lord Skelter and uh, Joseph Knight and, uh, you know, Johnny, uh, the uh, Uber of Westchester, uh, they come Hang in. on, hang on, him. Zoe. <laughs> The Uber of Westchester. Ah, and you know right now, uh, Johnny <laughs> is really, uh, he's probably shaking his leg right now if he's listening. Um, that's live. Shaking something. <laughs> <laughs> that is live Lord every help. Friday night. And l let's get to the subject at hand. This is really uh, a bloody topic to talk about. Uh, right now, over the uh, the weekend, it a uh, video was released. Of uh, an indie wrestler, Priscilla Kelly, uh, when she faced uh, a, a girl named Tuna in a suburban fight on December 30th. During the match, Kelly reached into her trunks and pulled out what appeared to be a bloody tampon and shoved it in Tuna's mouth. And the spot really had the wrestling community in uproar. Even professional wrestlers spoke out. Uh, one in particular is Impact, uh, Impact Knockout champion, former. Gail Kim, she tweeted in her disgust regarding the spot. She stated the following. I've seen this post of a woman's match that got disgusting, and I'm not going to respond because it's seriously a dis disgrace. Why? Whoever thought of this was a spot that was going to get a pop and was worth it. No. Why telling the story in the ring instead of your uh, wrestling stead? Uh... Kelly responded, you know, she, she had no problem speaking out, and she says, hey, guys, y'all know it's fake. 21-plus show with a bar. You can't life take, uh, so, take life so seriously all the time. You call me what you will. Now, Andy, I'm going to kick this over to you, and I, you know, um, it was a bit graphic, but obviously it wasn't a real bloody one, but I think sometimes you need that over-the-top spot. What's your thoughts on the situation? I think I think the story it's done exactly what it wanted people to do. It's got people um, talking about it on the internet, so they guaranteed get a better show out of it. And that's at the end of the day, that's what wrestling does. Unfortunately, the barriers do get pushed. Yeah, maybe they've gone a bit too far this time, but they they do get pushed. The only thing I can say about that Gail Kim, the only thing that really insulted Gail Kim about that old scenario, I think. Um, I think that the email basically said, or the message that she sent on Twitter should have been, um, I'm I'm offended by you sticking a tampon in that lady's mouth because us ladies who are full of testosterone don't have periods, and I'd love to have a tampon shoved in my mouth. In fact, I'd like one shoved in my pussy. <laughs> oh, my God. So oh, God. guys. He has absolutely no filter. So for those of you who are listening, that's why we call discretion and die. Uh, and that's specifically for you, Andy. Uh, the filth, filth, filth. Can't even say that word. <laughs> by the by, the way, I am not related to Lord Alfred Hayes. <laughs> that's that a disclosure, can, guys. That we can prove. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, uh, it, you know, Andy, you said it got what it did. It really got a lot of hits. I think so far, even on the Facebook video, it's got 486,000 views. Over on Twitter, it has uh, over 1,600 views and like 900 uh, uh, retweets. Uh, Kayla, you, you know, you <laughs> are a professional wrestler in the room, and you're a female wrestler. Uh, what are your thoughts about this? Do you think they stepped over the line? Do you think you know this kind of gave a push so people? continue to follow. Ste stepped over the string. Stepped over the string. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, 
for me, just because of the way that I am, it did disgust me. I was like, ooh, why would you even include that into a storyline? But, I mean, hey, it got them over. If I was there, yeah, I probably would have been one of the fans chanting, you sick fuck. But, hey, you know, if it's going to boost them like it has, you know, everybody on the internet is talking about good for them. I guess whatever you think is going to work, and it works. Do it again. I don't know. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Liz, uh, you know, even on a hardcore wrestling radio and plenty in the past, we've done a lot of segments that was kind of uh, a little pushing the bar, so to speak. We've done the uh, FMK, for those of you who don't know what that means, it means fuck, Mary kill uh, scenario several times. Yeah. And we've just done a lot of other stuff that some people may find uh, disgraceful or inappropriate, so to speak. But let's, you know, so would you say this is stepping over the string, or the proverbial string, or... Uh, it's getting you... very close to put going things pulling a little too far. But it's almost like, I right, say a dude was in a match, and he busts out some toilet paper, wrapped it around his hands, goes in the back of his tights, it comes out brown, and what... Smashes it in a guy's face. Basically, yeah. same thing. Uh, you know, well, it, it'd be a, still work, but uh, honestly, the biggest problem with this, the chick that did it, admitting it was a work so damn soon. Mm-hmm. Milk, honey. Uh, you know what? I mean, it, 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 that's a very fair point, but I think, you know, because they got so much heat, she's like, look, you know what? You don't like it too bad. And, you know, it's kind of like uh, that car crash, the proverbial car crash. You see a six-car pileup, you start yeah. slowing down, and if it's really hellacious, you're going to pull over the side of the road, and you're going to do it like it's some kind of tailgate party. Wait, hold on, hold on. They're opening the jaws of life. Oh, wait, there's a head. There's oh. a head. Come on, there's oh. some legs. Can wait, honey. You know, we got a show here right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was definitely a shock spot, and... Those same people that are screaming to the heavens in disgust will be there next week or the week after for their next event to see what they're going to do next. And that's what the WWE Attitude Era did. You know, they always, you know, kept on pushing that line and pushing it and pushing it to the point where it even some people are questioning uh, WWE's uh, antics, so to speak. Okay, no response there. Andy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know if you guys can remember, with WWE a couple of times, uh, Jim Ross I, I thought he'd got prostate cancer, and they did a sketch about that. So it's nothing like WWE haven't done that's bang out of order, because I thought that was a bit bad when a member of your team's dying of cancer, and um, they show like loads of things that they were pulling from up JR's arse. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> And, you know, and, or out of a certain orifice of May Young. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I was going to bring that one up, Lance. Uh, you know, they had that story years ago again during the Attitude Era where Mark Henry and May Young had a sexual affair. Uh, May Young, of course, being in her 60s or even 70s, and she was pregnant when she gave birth to a hand. Lance, uh, I, I, again, that would probably put it along. Would you say that's along the same line as uh, the topic, of, uh, uh, or is it somewhere in between? What's your thoughts? <sighs> okay, because this was something that legit resembled a used uh, tampon versus there is no no uh, confusing the. What they were actually doing in that skit for with May Young giving birth, it was so tongue in cheek it wasn't even funny. So I say it's close, but nowhere near the line that uh, this thing drew. Yeah, I mean yeah. they were coming out like covered in Jello or something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, it, it, you know I, I think, uh, you know, Ms. Jack shit, my woman, uh, she said it earlier after I told her. She was kind of laughing. She was a little like, oh, okay, that's funny, but it's one of those things you're hard to look away from. And, uh, you know, she says it's, <laughs> it's a joke, uh, not a cock. Don't take life so hard. <laughs> you know. Oh, God. And, and for the, again, you know, you cannot 
you know, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, it's unprofessional. You know, they're throwing their career down the toilet. Uh, well, it's not out of the toilet yet. Well, it's probably least flushed out of the toilet by now. It's, uh, it, it's at least in the trash can. But, you know, again, um, Zoe, don't you think it's maybe time that, you know, there are some promotions that said, you know what, we can't live in the world of PG where, you know, or even family friendly where you got to bring the kids under 12 for free, but instead have one of those wrestling promotions that's basically a circus or uh, focused around people 21 and over. Well, I mean, as far as that goes, the only promotions that I've ever been to and ever worked for were all family friendly. But to me, it's like whenever you do family friendly, people's not going to get as into it. Whenever you have a separate show that's 21 and over, it's going to draw more people because they're going to be like, OK, well, somebody's top is going to get ripped off or they're going to set each other on fire. It just makes you kind of ponder what's going to happen at this show. Yeah. So, but again, like I said, uh, I want to give some, uh, uh, give a few shout outs for those who uh, read the article but weren't available to come on. Uh, first, the Lord Scaldron uh, says, another thing added to the list on uh, why indie promotions are losing control. These marks are ruining the business just to please a few friends and on social media followers. Promoters need to stop letting these quote unquote workers do stupidly in uh, stupidity things in them our rings. Marks. Um, and again, you know, I, I understand why Joe, he came from a completely different era. Um, so for him, I can understand why he finds it maybe a bit distasteful because he goes to the golden era, the classic wrestling. I think even in today's, you know, WWE wrestling, uh, Joe has stated more than once that the flippy flops are done way too much. Uh, well, and that, I have to agree with him on the flippy flop thing. Definitely. Uh, Oh, absolutely. Like I said, sometimes there is too much. And again, you know, the question goes, when do you go too far? Or, you know, sometimes do you want to step over and keep on pushing that you know, that wall a little bit more? Uh, Terry Boyer just says, you know, wow, really? Uh, Ryan Arnold just pretty much uh, put a puke in a, uh, emoji. Uh, <laughs> Terry said, oh, I just watched it. And again, you know, I had a throw up spot. Uh, yeah. So, again, you know, uh, we want to know right now, guys, for those of you who are going to be listening to this podcast, the podcast is being reported, but I want to have your thoughts. Please put your comments in the comment section below. Uh, we'll also have this over on our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash HWR show, but it will be in our chat room where we always have the main interaction, and that's on the group test uh, channel in uh, Facebook, HWR chat room. I am your hardcore host, Rick Head, and I want to thank everybody who's listening in. Again, Lance, we call you the, uh, you know, the redneck uh, guru, and you do a lot of other things. Tell us what you got going on. Well, right now I'm still in my little bit of a holiday break, because be, be straight up with you, I can't decide what I want to do my Friday videos on. So it probably it might be till my birthday, it might be around Royal Rumble when I get that started back up, but. Right now, it's uh, Lance Moss TV and Friends on uh, every Wednesday night. I would never know who's going to show up if this damn cold goes away. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's every Wednesday night at seven, no, six Central, seven Eastern, whatever the hell else time it is where you are. You do the math, I because I don't know. Anyway, uh, you can also follow me on Twitter. It's at Lance Moss TV. All right, and he is the son of a bitch, Andy. We call him the son of a bitch because, believe me, guys, when you listen, <laughs> he's on. Uh, anything could be out of the bag, and that includes the uh, bloody tampon. Andy, you uh, are st uh, still content uh, over in the U.K. Tell everybody about it. Yeah, we're a paranormal group that takes no nonsense. We don't do the usual bullshit like most of the other paranormal teams do. We don't like Lance. We're on a bit of a break at the moment. Things are about to change, so... Keep checking the, the Facebook or the, the website or the YouTube channel. Because, like I say, there's going to be a few changes, some for the better, probably some for the worst. But uh, with your support, I'm sure we'll um, be back on track again very soon. So it's www.stokehaunted.com for those that are interested. Those that aren't, just ignore that last 30 seconds. <laughs> 
and she uh, she is uh, Kentucky Zone Wrestling Zone Zoe Nightshade. Zoe, you just had a show last week. Why don't you tell everybody about KZW and when they can find you? Okay. Well, the show was last night. We have a show coming up this coming weekend in Shopville, Kentucky on Saturday the 12th. And we actually have a huge show coming up on January the 26th, also in Shopville. This is our tribute show. Not only for Jeffrey Carter and Shane Smalls, which is two of our wrestlers we lost this past year, but it's also to a lot of dedicated fans that followed us everywhere we went that we last that we lost within the past year as well. We've got several other promotions joining us to put on this tribute show. So make sure if you're around in the area, you come by at 7 o'clock. That's when the doors open. Bell time is at 7.30. I will be there. You guys can always find me on HUR. You can also find me on another uh, Facebook page I have, which is called The Nightmare Vixen, where I go live every Friday night at 10.30 p.m. is Eastern Standard Time to share some really, really scary and supposedly true terrifying stories. All right. And, of course, I want to give uh, a shout-out to uh, other two guys, you know, hardcore cruise guy members that are not here. First, he is the Uber of Westchester, and that is Johnny Perez. Uh, oh, hold on, Vic. Uh, we got to give it over to Zoe. <laughs> The Uber of Westchester. That's right. And, hey. you know, you can give him a hashtag and you can send him over, and, you know, and he'll uh, always look to give you guys a ride. And last and certainly not least, he's the host of Four Quarter Rents. He is the Lord Sculptor himself, Joseph Knight. He does a lot of online gaming uh, and does a lot of retro stuff. So for those of you who go over there, check him out at SculptorsRealms.com. And for that, for the Hardcore Crew, this is Rick Head saying, we'll see you when we see you. Lance? Buy the shirt! <laughs>